What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. We're going to be taking a little bit of a break talking about the Jacksonville Jaguars this week. And we're going to be talking about the American Football Alliance or the Alliance of American Football, the AAF, and the new football league that us football fans can watch once the NFL is over. And there is some great talent in this league, as well as some really solid coaches but there's still a lot we really do not know about this beginning uh, football league. But in all of my honest opinion, I really think it has the potential to be successful. And today what we're going to do with very limited knowledge, we're going to be ranking these eight teams from worst to best to have a chance to take home the first ever AAF championship. So ladies and gentlemen, let's not waste any more time. This is all eight AAF teams ranked from worst to best. Number eight, the Hot Shots. Notable players on the Hot Shots lineup is linebacker Scooby Wright, running back Tim Cook, and quarterback Trevor Knight. Now, what you will notice um, in this video is if you don't really have a notable quarterback, you aren't going to be very high on this list. Hence, Trevor Knight being the most notable quarterback on this Hot Shots team. They are not going to be ranked very high. Their head coach is Rick Nua Heisel. I think I said that right if you are a Hot Shots fan, and I did not say it right, I apologize. But Rick Nua Heisel, he has an 87-59 and 59 record as a college coach. He coached for Colorado and UCLA um, and UW as well. He was also the Rose Bowl MVP as a player. Now he's a quarterback coach and an offensive coordinator for two years for the Ravens. So that is his NFL coaching experience. So they don't really have a quarterback of note on the Hot Shots. And they have one of the least experienced head coaches as well. So I think the Hot Shots are going to be a rebuilding team. You know, a team that just got built and is already, unfortunately, probably going to have to rebuild. I see the Hot Shots probably being the worst team in the league this year. But again, don't take too much into this because we all really don't know a whole lot about this league and a whole lot about the talent that is going to be discovered um, in this league as well. So like I said, don't take this to heart too much it's just based off a of coaching experience notable players and a little bit of film that i've seen on key players um that are on the team and as of now the hot shots unfortunately look like the eighth best team out of eight teams in the aaf coming in at number seven we have the iron now for the iron notable names they have on their squad is running back trent richardson trent richardson was a stud in the nfl his first year before getting traded to the colts and looking like one of the biggest busts um, in NFL history as far as that goes. He tried to revitalize his career in the CFL, and that didn't really work out uh, either. So hopefully the AAF is the final destination that Trent Richardson can be at to really make a career for himself. But unfortunately, he's probably the most notable player on this team. They also have wide receiver Quentin Patton, um, who was drafted a couple of years ago. I think 2015 Quentin Patton was drafted. I think he played for the Jets. Um, and kicker Nick Novak. It's crazy that... You know, Nick Novak, who's an experienced kicker, is just deciding to uh, take an AAF job when, you know, uh, the kicking job in the NFL is really uh, off and on, hot and cold. So, you know, he probably could get an NFL job somewhere if he wanted to, but it's cool that uh, he's sticking with the AAF. Now, the Irons head coach is Tim Lewis. Tim Lewis was a first-round selection in the 1983 NFL draft by the Green Bay Packers. He was a NFL player for only four years, and they were all with the Packers. He started his coaching career as a defensive backs coach, obviously, for SMU from 1989 to 1992. His first NFL job was with the Pittsburgh Steelers as another defensive back coach position from 1995 to 1999. Then he made the jump to the defensive coordinator position for the Pittsburgh Steelers from the years 2000 to 2003. And he'd have one more defensive coordinator stint, and that was for the New York Giants in 2004 through 2006 and returned to a defensive back coach from 2007 through 2015 for the Carolina Panthers. Now, the Iron, again, they have this coach who has only really had minimal head coaching ability. And as of notable names, Nick Novak being a kicker is one of the most notable teams, uh, notable players on the team. So that is not a good sign uh, for the Iron um, an inexperienced coach who doesn't have too much head coaching experience 
a developmental league is not going to help you uh, get victories. So unfortunately for you Iron fans, you guys come in at number seven. Coming in at number six, I have the Memphis Express. Some notable names from the Express are Zach Mettenberger, Christian Hackenberg, and running back Zach Stacy. Now the head coach for the Express is Mike Singletary. Singletary is a player that doesn't need any introduction as far as his playing career goes. He's an NFL Hall of Famer, part of the best defense in NFL history, the 1985 Bears, and could also, also be argued as one of the best linebackers of all time as well. Now, as a coach, that history has kind of been debatable. He started off as a linebacking coach for the Ravens from 2003 to 2004 and then moved to San Francisco as a linebacking coach and would become the interim head coach and soon the official head coach from the years 2009 through 2010. And we know how that stint went. It did not go very well, and he proved that he couldn't really take the pressure of being an NFL head coach. Now that pressure might be relieved a little bit on a new league in the AAF, um, teaching an expansion, coaching an expansion team um, in the Memphis Express. He also has two of the better quarterbacks that I have seen uh, in the AAF uh, on his side. I know Christian Hackenberg is kind of, you know, to say that he's good is a little bit of a stretch, but Zach Mettenberger, I think, is a quarterback that really failed to meet his potential in the NFL. I think that he is a guy that could perform in the AAF and be one of the premier players in this league. I think, again, like I said, he kind of underachieved. During his time in the NFL, he also had some injuries. I think that this is the perfect opportunity for him to revitalize his career. And there's another guy on this Express team that can do the same exact thing with running back Zach Stacy. Zach Stacy had a good year. I mean, had a good, uh, you know, tenure for the Rams, but the Rams just weren't a good team and they weren't coached well. Um, of course, Jeff Fisher at the time, but he was a solid running back. And this is another guy that I think could take over this league as far as being a really solid player in a league that's not necessarily filled with stars. Zach Stacy was a guy that really looked like he had star potential but kind of disappeared from the face of the earth. But now he's going to be in this league, and I think that this league uh, is going to do him as a player uh, wonders. Now you're probably wondering, why do I have him at six as the third worst team? And that's because I'm not buying all into Mike Singletary's uh, coaching abilities. We will see how well um, he will coach these guys and develop these guys. But as of now, it's crazy. But I think Mike Singletary and his coaching ability might be holding the Express back from being up a couple of uh, rankings on this list. Coming in at number five, we have the Atlanta Legends. Um, and there's some notable players for them. They have quarterback Aaron Murray, running back Denard Robinson, quarterback Matt Sims, and kicker Young Ho Koo, who used to be the Chargers kicker back in the day, and I want to throw him in there because his name is really fun to say. Their head coach is Kevin Coyle. Kevin Coyle started his coaching career as a defensive coordinator for Holy Cross from 1986 through 1990, and he'd have defensive coordinator stops for Syracuse, Maryland, and Fresno State before moving to the NFL to be a defensive back coach for the Cincinnati Bengals from 2003 through 2011, where he was well-respected, earning him a NFL defensive coordinator spot um, for the Miami Dolphins from the year 2012 through 2015. Now, I think Aaron Murray is an interesting quarterback prospect in this league, another guy that was really solid in college, didn't really see his chance in the NFL, and I'm really excited to see um, what he's going to do with this opportunity that has blessed him uh, with the AAF. And I think that uh, Kevin Coyle is a good enough coach in order to uh, kind of lead these studs, lead these players. Denard Robinson, another guy who really flashed a lot for my Jacksonville Jaguars and really kind of showed out and showed uh, the true potential that he truly has as far as uh, being a really good running back, you know, transitioning from the quarterback position. So I think that's going to be another solid guy on this uh, Legends roster along with Aaron Murray, and I mean, they got a young clutch kicker in Young Hoku, uh, and I don't even know if that's how you say it, but that's how it sounds, so Young Hoku, the kicker. So, you know, a, a guy that's coaching doesn't really have a lot of coaching experience, and he also hired an offensive coordinator who doesn't really have much coaching experience, but it's fun. Michael Vick will be the offensive coordinator for this team, and, uh, you know, Aaron Murray, who probably will be the starting quarterback, is going to be able to learn from one of the best mobile quarterbacks of all time, if not the best mobile quarterback of all time. And I think the Legends are going to be a sleeper team for this season. Coming in at number four, we have the Salt Lake Stallions, the, co the team that we are going to be primarily covering here on the channel. Some notable names is BJ Daniels, who added me on Twitter, and Matt Asiata. Matt Asiata was a bell cow back for the 
Vikings for, I believe, a year or two, another solid back that I think has potential to kind of run over the league and really show that he has the potential to be a solid back in this league as well. Um, their head coach is Dennis Erickson. His first head coaching job was right down the way from where I'm from, at Idaho from 1982 to 1985. And then he headed to Wyoming for a one-year stint and then for Washington, to Washington State University for three years until joining the U, Miami, from 1989 through 1994, where he won a national title. From there, he spent three seasons as the, as the uh, Seattle Seahawks coach from 19, 1995 through 1998 before returning to the college, before returning to college, I should say, excuse me, to coach Oregon State. Uh, from the years 1999 through 2002 before getting another NFL shot for the San Francisco 49ers from 2003 through 2004. And then he returned to the University of Idaho for the 2006 season and then went to Arizona State from 2007 through 2011. And just some of his accolades, accolades I should say, two-time national champ, six-time conference champion, three-time Pac-10 Coach of the Year, three-time Big East Coach of the Year. He's 40-56 and 56 as an NFL head coach, which out of these guys that have coached in the NFL is actually a pretty solid record. And he went 179-96 and 96 in college with a losing bowl record going 5-7, and seven, but again with two national championships. Now he's getting up there in age. Um, it's debated to see what, you know, his philosophy is going to be, if it's going to be like a power run scheme, you know, the old school sort of way that uh, Dennis Erickson is going to run this squad. And, I mean, they got guys like Asiata who could really run that as well. Um, and they got a mobile quarterback that really should open up the run game in uh, B.J. Daniels. So, and Daniels, again, he's experienced. He's 29 years old, so I think that that little bit of moxie as well is going to help this team. And with the coaching experience and the coaching excellence, really, of Dennis Erickson, I think will lead the Stallions to the right direction and could be it to win the first championship of the AAF. Coming in at number three, I have the Commanders. Some notable players for them is David Cobb, Speedy Noyle, who was once the number one ranked player in his class coming out of high school, a very exciting athlete to watch, and Nick Rose, another kicker. So their head coach is Mike Riley. Mike Riley was the USC offensive coordinator from the years 1993 through 1996. He was Oregon State's head coach from the 97 season till the 98 season. Now his first NFL had his first NFL coaching gig was with the Chargers from 1999 through 2001. His longest head coaching job was with Oregon State from the years 2003 through 2014. He went to Nebraska for a short time between 2015 and 2017. Now in college, he is 112 and 99. As a college head coach, he's 14 and 34 in the National Football League. 40 and 32 in the Canadian Football League, 7 and 3 in bowl games. He won two Grey Cups with the Winnipeg Win a Peg Bombers, which is the championship game for the uh, Canadian Football League, and he was the 2008 Pac-10 Coach of the Year. Now, I think out of all the coaches that I've researched and uh, done a lot of digging uh, for this list, I think that I like his coaching strategy the most. And they have a good running back in David Cobb, and you know you got Speedy Noyle, who's a excellent excellent prospect and you know has really never got a fair shout in the nfl or even in college where you know he ended up having a guy like christian kirk uh step up in front of him uh if you're ever curious to know what happened to speedy noyle my boy one of my uh favorite youtubers from low raps has a whole video dedicated to that i'll leave that in the description down below but i like mike riley's uh coaching philosophy from you know his days at USC, Oregon State, you know, I did a little reading up on the guy, and I really like what he brings to the table, and I think he's going to be able to take this commander's team and really make it successful. Coming in at number two, I have the fleet. Some notable players for them is Bishop Sankey and Gavin Escobar. Their head coach is Mike Martz. He was with the Rams from 1992 through 2005 with a short pit stop in between with Washington from 1997 through 1998. He started off as a wide receiver coach for the Rams, then an OC for the greatest show on turf in 1999, and won the Super Bowl with the team and was named the head coach in 2000, and was the Rams head coach from 2000 through 2005. He had three offensive coordinator stops after that between 2006 and 2011 with the Lions, Niners, and Bears. He was the Super Bowl champion in 1999, has a total of 53 wins and 32 losses in the regular season in the NFL, which, again, is a great record to have for these guys that are coming in 
uh, for an NFL record. You know, a lot of these guys have losing records, you know, or guys that are almost breaking even. But as of now, a 53 and 32 regular season record is a great record to have uh, in this league. You know, you're coaching up against the best of the best, and you know, you're coming into this league. Now, a season he ended his post a postseason record of three and four, so that's not that great. But to have a solid winning percentage in the NFL come to the AAF, which honestly is lower tier talent with uh, you know guys that you're really going to have to develop. So I think the fleet with Bishop Sankey as well, which is another guy kind of like Zach Stacy, I think has the potential to kind of take over this league because it's not like he was a slouch when he was playing. He was a really solid running back. Uh, some injuries and some not so good teams kind of held him back from his full potential. But I think that Mike Martz and this fleet team is going to be able to bring it out of them. And I think that they are the second team that could win the first ever AAF championship, but they're not number one because number one is coming in at number one. We have the Apollos. The Apollos actually kicked off uh, a scrimmage with the Salt Lake Stallions to uh, start the season. They ended up losing, but their coach might just be the guy to kind of train all these guys, put them through the ringer and make sure they have a tremendous first season. Of course, that coach is Steve Spurrier. Um, for context, the only player on the Apollos that I really know is Scott Orndoff, and he's a tight end and a blocking tight end at that. So Steve Spurrier is a guy that I really think could take this team and make them successful. Let's just go over some of the accolade, accolades, I keep on saying accolades, accolades for Spurrier. Um, he was the head coach first for Duke from 87 to 89, and then he went to Florida from 1990 through 2001, where he has a 228 and 89 record as a college coach. He would then move on to the NFL for one season and was let for two seasons, I should say, excuse me, uh, for two seasons and was let go. He has a 12 and 20, 12 and 20 record as an NFL head coach and actually coached in the USFL as well. We're at a 35 and 21 record as a head coach. He won the national title with Florida. He has six SEC championships games, uh, six SEC championships, I should say. He's a seven-time SEC coach of the year, and him himself was the 1966 Heisman winner, and he's in almost every Florida sports um, Hall of Fame. So I think with the accolades that this coach has, Steve Spurrier, and the ability that he has to produce winners, I think that's really all the Apollos need. Now the thing is that I want to address with all these coaches, it's been a while since a lot of them have been head coaches somewhere. But um, with that being said, there's a lot of guys that had way more successful careers than others. And, you know, Spurrier's a guy that didn't have a lot of good uh, NFL experience, but obviously a terrific college experience. And I think with bringing that with him, I think he's going to be able to bring a championship to the Apollos this year in the first season of AAF football. And that was me ranking every single AAF team from worst to best. What do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to link links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. Also, if you're feeling oh so generous, you can go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Troop Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel five days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you'll be great.